we are the Catalan independentist resistance, and you are listening to a new update from Radio Hadrian in Free Catalonia. The truth is the truth, even that truth is defended by a minority, even if that minority is a minority of one person, Mahatma Gandhi. Good afternoon, this is David Rabanto, this is chapter 39 and 40, because for technical reasons we couldn't be with you with the new program last week. As always, thanks to KA Radio, the voice of new music, and Cheryl Scott for allowing us to say the things about Catalonia and sometimes Scotland that you won't hear nowhere else. This week uh, I want to go on about what really was the 1st of October um, referendum in Catalonia, which is no such thing. And then there's some, I'm going to talk about some of the big four we talked in some previous programs, uh, Leon Festinger, Solomon Ash, Leo Strauss and Udo Kote, which are necessary to understand the way of the world. And we'll comment a couple of things about Scotland and uh, that will be it, more or less. But I'd like to start with Scotland this week. I um, It was something I would have mentioned last week. It's something might seem trivial or minor. But it's, it's It shows the way they manipulate us. And a few days ago, and it's the old news, Nicola Sturgeon was mentioned in the Sky News uh, poll or as the most influential uh, women uh, woman ever in the UK and this is something that needs to sink in we need to really think this over nowadays with YouTube the concept of influencer or being influential or something has has eroded quite a bit or has lost its original meaning but somebody is influential when it's somebody that is capable of changing things. And certainly Nicola Sturgeon has presided over 56 out of 59 Scottish seats in Westminster and has had a overall majority for independence in Holyrood. And nevertheless, Scotland is not independent. So then again, they're mocking you on your faces because that's it. If the most uh, influential woman in history of UK, it means that she has changed history. It means had it not been because of her, Scotland would have become independent. That's the only way you can interpret the fact that Nicola Sturgeon is mentioned as the most influential woman in the history of UK. It means no, nobody who has failed can be considered the most influential woman in the history of UK. It's kind of obvious, no? So it kind of shows if she is the most influential one, it means that she is not batting for independence. She is batting for the union. As we have maintained uh, since program one here, and I have maintained since September 2014, when the mockery of the referendum in Scotland became blatant. And when soon after that I had in front of me Stephen Noon, who lied to us about why the referendum was lost. It was not lost, I told him. Scotland voted yes. And UK, mainly the SNP, made every arrangement took uh, none of the safeguards, exit polls, uh, chain of custody, and local counting. Those are not because of the SMB, it's because of the legal system that you've let yourself be run by. But influential, yes. How has she influenced UK politics? She has averted, she has avoided, she has impeded, she has postponed for the time being the independence of Scotland. That's uh, why she is uh, influential. That's how she has influenced 
Scotland politics by not making independence, which was in the books. Another thing is the passing thought. I've read somebody in uh, Facebook saying, Oh, finally I've got round to reading The Dream Will Never Die, the book written by Alex Hammond, The Hundred Days Towards a Referendum. And she was, th that person was uh, euphoric, enthusiastic about the book and saying, Now I've read it and now we have the experience. It, it beggars to believe how somebody in good faith, but possibly it wasn't bad faith, I mean, we know that. We know that in Facebook, 9 out of 10 people saying that they work for independence, they work for the other side. One of the 10 paid by the UK, but the other 8 of 10 because they are following the, the, the previous one. When you read 100 days, uh, to the referendum, the dream shall never die. First, the title is a mockery as well. We've said this before here. This independence is not a dream to keep there forever, like, I don't know, like winning the lottery or this kind of thing that never comes, except to a very few. It should be a working objective. It should be an objective that you, the SMP, Alex Salmon, Nicola Sturgeon, and the rest should have accomplished because you've wasted the best chance, it was 2014. It's not a dream that shall never die. It should be an objective to be accomplished. Otherwise, you are not pro indie you just make believe in me. In that book, I remember how he dare say, oh, what a pity we didn't order exit polls. But anyways, that only is it's not so important. It's not so important, Salmon. But then, of course, what can you expect from somebody who is a member of the Privy Council of the Queen of England? Certainly, you cannot both serve the Scottish people and the Queen of England. So, when you're pretending to serve both, you're a traitor to one of them. Guess what? He's not a traitor to the Queen of England. Mm. Then he's a traitor to the people of Scotland. And the book, if read with critical view, offers a lot of hints on that field. Uh, coming back to Catalonia. Um, this week there's been some detention of some guy who's highly placed in the Catalan government. Well, this guy again was a member of Federación Nacional de Estudiantes de Catalunya, the, the pro indie student union university. I was also a member of. The problem is, I have explained previously, this, this um, syndicate was run by none other than the mole uh, Joan Vives and Soler Vicente, whose wife now, Anarche, is quite active as a mole in the Scottish process as well. So, um, all this is just to keep our eyes not focused on the fact that we had a majority for independence and they didn't declare it. And now Spain has to keep doing all these things so people think about everything but the real thing, which is our side let us down. And we need to finally focus on what really was the referendum of the 1st of October. We mentioned here in this program, before in chapter 4, I think it was, referendums are not there to bring independence, are there to steal independence like they did twice in Quebec and once in Scotland and now in Catalonia. And they do it in several different ways. Uh, go back to chapter 4, please, and we explain there. In Greece they won, but they didn't apply. It's the same as in Catalonia. We won, but it doesn't apply. So referendums are only implemented when they, they, they happen to give the result that the powers that be want. And the important thing here is we gave them, our politicians, a mandate to declare independence 18 months after September 2015, which they didn't fulfill. And we had an important activist, Muriel Casals, and she died run over by a bicycle in Barcelona. Peculiar, isn't it? And then a second person, uh, yours uh, faithfully, David Rabantos. I start a hunger strike denouncing that everybody on our side works for the enemy. And they locked me in a criminal way, in a psychiatric ward, and for 62 days they tortured me with chemicals. And bam, then a referendum that was not in the books appears. And then, so the 1st of October should never have happened. They should have declared UDI, which is the mandate we gave them. And then they introduced 1st of October. And 1st of October 
was treason was unnecessary and something you know how this elites this kind of like uh, people running the world I don't like using the terms Illuminati or these things because I uh, they tend to me to be easy to mock or we only talk about things we know for sure here we don't uh, speculate so um, what is certain is the first of October uh, those of you not Catalan probably don't know but the first of October was the day General Franco came into power and it was the day that for 40 years was celebrated as Franco's day only a Spaniard could plot to put a referendum in which Catalans were going to be hit the same day as Franco's day and now we know but when you realize that uh, the penny drops and then we have to be able to interpret from this truth which is 1st of October was put there to avoid independence because no matter what the result was they were going to go backwards and we had people as Clara Ponsati which is now back to St. Andrews as we said we said in July she has been put as member of Catalan government but she's not to be trusted and bang she said recently that we were not ready blah 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 and now she's back to Scotland why because the euro order from the those Spaniards that really want so bad uh, in prison push them on and all that have retired the euro order so now they're all free to travel everywhere but in Spain so uh, they're actually very free to go wherever they want and um, so this 1st of October is the reason why the Catalan prisoners are in prison but then if 1st of October it's a Spanish operation why are they in prison? well obvious you know to protect them how could the Catalan politici politicians be saying what they say it was symbolic we didn't declare we were afraid we were not prepared they would be lynched on the streets why are they not lynched on the streets oh because some of them are in prison why because they did the first of October but when you clarify that first of October it's a Spanish plot to murder independence then uh, you're not blind anymore so everybody defending first of October Catalan media Catalan politicians Catalan journalists Catalan organizations Catalan Facebook groups they all work for Spain that's why they are defending a uh, something that was a plot to murder independence we said it before it happened we said no matter what happens in 1st of October they won't declare independence and they haven't we're not Nostradamus we just know because we've been fighting for 30 years and especially the last four so we're not taking it laying down so that's the main ideas here is referendums are bad for independence only UDI brings independence and that's not debatable it's not a matter open to debate sadly we live in a world where it seems that every opinion comes the same and it's not better rehearsed uh, better informed people who have risked things to reach certain uh, positions those opinions count and opinions that are poured by people brainwashed by mainstream media those opinions shouldn't count it's bad enough that votes of somebody who only blubbers what what has seen on television comes the same of the vote of a free thinker. That's that's toxic enough. That's dictator dictatorial enough. Contrary to what people think, people seem to think that that brings democracy. What? But anyways, first of October is a Spanish plot to murder independence. So everybody who is related to 1st of October, it's a traitor to Catalonia, not a hero. We said in the Catalan and Spanish version, and we're also going to see here, there's a lot of people that don't know that Michael H. Sweeney defined asking for proof every time, every time, every time, as one of the 25 rules spies use on us. One of the 25 rules of disinformation we've already mentioned. And it's very tiring having to repeat that there's different kind of proof, and there's witnesses, and there's face-to-face, -face, and there's presumptions when somebody does two fake declarations of independence 
like Carlos Puigdemont does, and then he kisses the Spanish flag, and then he chooses Waterloo to mock all the independence movement, if you are presumed traitor. Okay? But to go from the presumption to something solid, and really, I have to go to this point, and I really hope never again we have to put up with um, people not fully there coming to ask for proof, proof, proof. Proof uh, for courts. And in a case like this, which is treason to the Catalans, it should be there in the penal code. But bad news. There is no such thing as Catalan court because every court in Catalonia are Spanish courts. And I have something else. The penal code to apply is the Spanish penal code. And it's not surprising that um, avoiding the independence of Catalonia, not only it's not in the penal code, but it's reason enough to be given medals by Spanish government. Because those guys are Spanish heroes, the same as Salmon and Sturgeon are British heroes. Those guys have avoided independence, an independence that was 40 points ahead in November 2013. They've been postponing things, fighting at one another, exploding scandals, letting violence be done into Catalans. All those things have been allowed, if uh, not arranged, by Catalan in the so-called Catalan pre-independence leaders. And that's it. So, how can you prove anything? You, how can you prove? In front of an uh, enemy court with an enemy penal code that these people have been traitors to Catalonia, which is not a state that they plan to defend. So, please, next time you're thinking of asking proof, just go to sleep, watch a film, uh, whatever. But don't. I mean, it's hard enough. It's hard enough to fight the British secret services and the Spanish secret services without having to fight a lot of never-do-good who appear in the middle of the battlefield brandishing this proof, 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 proof thing. Uh, we don't have any more difficulties. We already have. If you don't feel you can join the Scottish resistance or the Catalan resistance, just do nothing. Nothing means, of course, not connecting to social media. Just stay home. You go to work if you have one, and you come back home, you feed yourself, and you wait for things to happen. Okay? But please, don't make things more difficult to those of us who are fighting this. And um, the rest of things I could comment are fairly local. Uh, there's elections in the Assemblée Nationale Catalana, which is the, the main... Uh, graduate organization, but the people presenting to them are the usual suspects, including the former girlfriend of the mole, Juan Vives and Sule Vicens, the, the one that was substituted later on by Jan Arque, but they, they made together something called the International Commission of European Citizens, so uh, no hard feeling between ex-girlfriend and present wife of the mole, Juan Vives and Sule Vicens. And this person, Elisenda Palucia, was instrumental in getting me in the psychiatric ward and this Alisenda Paludier, she was contending or fighting this grassroots organization publicly several years ago and now she wants to be president of it. I mean, if if the level of brainwash was not so advanced everywhere in the world, especially in Catalonia it would be impossible that this woman could present herself to run Assemblée Nationale Catalonia. Uh, another th brief thing, we have a satire program called Polonia, that's because like uh, Franco people called us Polish to the Catalans. And we don't know if it's because they didn't understand what we said or because of what the Nazis did with Poland, which considering the relation between Franco and Hitler seems a possible reason for that. That program has been running for 13 seasons. But once you discover that it's there to brainwash people to love our traitor leaders, uh, you stop laughing. Normal, no? But this week they've made two things that are peculiar. In one of them, 
Spanish politicians go to Catalan school to force them to learn military Spanish things with some mimes and some things very extreme and wanting to shoot the, the rabbit or the, the pet in the class but in the end these two children are forced to kiss the Spanish flag and this puts in such tremendous light the fact that several weeks ago without being forced to our president uh, voluntarily uh, not our president Carlos Puigdemont which is a so-called president uh, kissed twice the Spanish flag, not once, twice the Spanish flag without Spanish ministers urging him to do so. So a Catalan kid can be forced by ministers to kiss it. But what's your excuse, put them on? You don't have any. But then, of course, you don't have any sense of dignity, so why should you be ashamed? Shame requires dignity. So it's very difficult, Carlos Puigdemont or the rest of Catalan leaders will ever be ashamed for betraying, lying millions of Catalans for eight years now. For the rest, uh, mentioning this, Catalan television is making, having a field day, talking about the people in prison, millions of Catalans have a yellow ribbon. All of this is organized by Spain. We mentioned in program 19, done a few hours after the um, Mockery's second declaration of independence, that this would go nowhere. And now they're gonna put in prison some Catalan leaders to protect them. And that's what's happened. So uh, they don't put people in prison to make them victims. Not in a case when there's betrayal. Let, let's put it like this. We're not talking about an open battle like could be fighting the upper head with Mandela. That, that was clear cut. Okay, There was people defending the rights of uh, the black people and people defending not the rights, defending the privilege and the oppression from the white Afrikaners. And it was clear cut. Yeah, but here is not clear cut. So uh, these people need to be protected from treason. And that's done by putting them in prison. So um, we're very confident because a lot of people is approaching our party to join. We know that some people are going to come in bad faith. There's already some new mini projects whose only objective is to avoid people joining Resistencia and Directa 68. But we have a very powerful documentary. It's going to be in English, Spanish, and Catalan. And uh, we know we will prevail because we are. We have prevailed 300 years of genocide. We've uh, been independent for 30 years, those of us running independent. We have fighted for 50 months to expose this mockery. And for 8 months we've fought until we've had a political party. The only political party who wants independence in Catalonia is Directa 68, which as we explained means we're going straight to have 68 seats which is overall majority in Catalonia, and then we declare. We're winning, we want to win this. This Catalonia Libra. This has been another update from the Catalan Independentist Resistance from Radio Hadrian. Remember that you can follow us on social media, either on Facebook, YouTube, our Twitter account, Instagram, Google, Telegram and also on e-books.